I'm going to try and survive 100 days in a Minecraft cave only world in hardcore mode. This world type has no trees, insanely weird world generation, and no way out. And on top of that, my world is in constant darkness, meaning deadly mobs spawn at all times. And if I die, my entire world is deleted forever. I have three goals for this video. Defeat the Ender Dragon, get a full set of netherite armor, and slay the Wither boss twice. Now let's begin. Day one. I, uh, I severely underestimated how dark this place was gonna be. Now, as I mentioned, trees don't generate down here, so the only way I can get wood is from mine shafts. So that was my first goal. I entered a nearby cave to look around, and to my utter surprise, there was a mine shaft right next to spawn. So I went ahead and did the natural progression, mined some wood, crafting table, wooden pick, mined some stone, made the basic tools, you get the gist. And I also came across a chest of minecart that had baguettes, iron, and a golden apple. So already I was on a good place right off the bat. But since I knew that mobs were going to be spawning at every single second, I really wanted to set up a mini base as soon as possible. So I dug into a wall of a mine shaft, set up a door, and bam, we got a mini starter hole. For the rest of the day, I kept exploring the mine shaft and taking all of its ores, mainly iron, like a lot of iron. And while I was exploring, I managed to find my first diamonds. It was only a four vein, but that was still enough for a shiny diamond pickaxe. Day two, I smelted some more raw items and looked around to see what I got from the chest of minecarts. Apparently, I picked up some glow berries along the way. When I tried to eat one, it gave me one puny hunger back. I also found even more diamonds while lost in the mine shaft, and after mining them all, I had enough for a fresh diamond helmet and chest plate. After some extra exploration in the shaft, I left the cave to explore the actual caverns that night. And right next to the mine shaft was this little grass area, which looked like the perfect spot for a future build. Day 3, I kept disassembling the mineshaft for wood, expanded my hobbit hole, and I didn't have a clue as to why these berries wouldn't grow. Figured it out eventually though, but these berries were definitely not worth the bone meal. I decided to visit that grass platform I found yesterday, and I found sheep on them. I didn't think that passive mobs spawned in this world, so I was super happy to see some animals. After crafting a bow early day 4, I swam around my cave and caught an axolotl in a bucket, brought the two sheep into a pen, and forced them to make some mutton. Child. I meant child. I also made a boat using the last of my wood and sailed off to this amethyst geode in my caverns. These are new in the snapshots and I really wanted those amethyst shards. And on my way back to the mine shaft, I also stumbled across another zombie spawner. Of course, the destroyer of hardcore worlds was awaiting my arrival, but I killed him pretty easily and got some okay loot from the chests. Day 5, I was trying to get seats so I could start my farming simulator journey. Food was relatively scarce and I wasn't looking to have a diet of just rotten flesh. But on my journey for seeds, I spotted one of the rarest items in a cave-only world, sugarcane. Sugarcane has a 0.5% chance of spawning in, so finding this was huge. But you know what's even more rare than sugarcane? The percentage of viewers who aren't subscribed. Send off the day I did some strip mining and found even more diamonds. You may think I'm cheating with all these diamonds, but I swear, in 1.17, they are just super easy to find. The next two days I finished off my armor set and made some more diamond tools. I then mined up a bunch of obsidian so that I could make another portal and an enchanting table, and then I tore down all the glowberries in my home. Turns out those were the only glowberries I was going to get for the rest of these 100 days. I won't miss them though, they, they were kind of trash. I also placed down my bucket axolotl, found another one in the mine shaft, and placed that one down as well. After that I found a new animal room in my platform, which I trapped in a hole and of course forced to reproduce. Day 8, I set up the nether portal because I was eager to go into the new dimension. The nether spawn was not amazing, so I walked around trying to find an okay spot, but there really wasn't one in sight. But after a few minutes of wandering, I did manage to find a warped forest, which finally allowed me to get a stable source of wood. And upon some further walking, I actually came across the nether fortress. I ran up to see if I could get in, but I have no balls, so I'll leave that for another time. But when I went back through my portal, I was not in my home anymore. Instead, the game put me in some random spot. So day 9, I had to figure out where in the heck this game placed me. I tried going so many different directions, but zero of them were leading me back home. Thankfully, after 15 minutes of strip mining, I found a ravine which led me straight back to my home. I do not understand why the game put me in some random cave, but all that matters is that I was home. Just out of curiosity though, I went back through the portal to see if it would lead me back to that spot, and of course, it didn't. Turns out 1.17 is actually the nether portal random god dang spot update. 
Day 10, I returned home to find my axolotls getting a little too touchy for my liking. I'm trying to avoid demonetization, guys. Just relax yourselves. I also took down my nether portal since I wanted to move it to a new location. Wouldn't really matter though, it'd put me in some random spot no matter where I put it. But with the nether portal out of my way, I spent the rest of the night expanding my new home. And by the morning of day 11, I had a pretty good chunk of space to move into. I also grew my first warped fungus block, meaning I can now have a sustainable source of wood in the overworld. Unfortunately, these trees leave this floating blue junk, but as long as I clean it up, it's not too big of an issue. Back in my home, I tried using some of these new polished deep slate blocks I had on the wall, and I thought it looked pretty good. But when I added these warped blocks, oh man, I knew this place was going to look insane. Especially with these andesite accents, it was looking absolutely immaculate. Day 12, I found that oddly enough, polished granite looks good on the floor. I usually hate granite in builds, but it actually looked decent here. Days 13 to 14, I created a mini strip mine because I was a little low on ores. I don't know why I strip mine, seeing as I had an entire cave as my world, but regardless, it ended up being really worth it. Because my strip mine ended up intersecting a small cave, which directed me right to a zombie spawner. I raided the chest, but that wasn't the best part, because literally 20 blocks from the zombie spawner was a spider spawner. That on its own isn't too special, but then I found this. I saw that and my jaw dropped to the floor. You can check the seed if you want, but I got an enchanted golden apple out of a dungeon chest. That's literally a 3% chance, and I actually got it. But you know what's even rarer than that? The chance that you're subscri- I spent the remaining two days caving for more valuables, but nothing was gonna beat that notch apple. I then tried my hand at fishing to see if I could get some mending books, but because there was no sky, fishing took like 25 times longer than usual, so clearly I could not get any mending books. But I did meet someone who could give me some, a zombie villager. I lured him back to my home and like a good neighbor, punched him into the hole. I named him McDiggin, but I won't transform him until we find one more zombie villager. The next day I spent all day trying to find a friend for McDiggin, and while waiting for mobs to spawn, I cleared out an even bigger area for my future villagers to stay in. My sheep and chickens were also multiplying extremely fast, and I managed to get 13 eggs from chickens. And with those eggs, I sped up a small egg farm on my complex. Day 18, I set up a new nether portal in the mineshaft, and I spawned in the same portal, luckily. I wanted to get some blaze rods for Eyes of Ender, but these skinny boys weren't too happy with me in their nether fortress, so I had to clap their cheeks. After some skull smacking, I got to collecting some rods. But I soon got too deep into the fortress, and this happened. I got down to one and a half hearts there. If I didn't have any food in my inventory, my entire world would have been deleted just three seconds later. Fortunately, a lot of stupid skeletons kept me entertained during my grind. Day 19, I was heading back home with nine blaze rods in total, and I got home pretty harm free. Kinda. Also, I think you already know what's about to happen. Son of a bi- Day 20, I somehow found my way back home and spent the rest of the day trying to find another zombie villager but it was a bust. I also made seven eyes and threw it to see the direction of the stronghold, and it went the worst direction possible. Not only that, but the eye failed, meaning I need even more eyes for the fight. Thankfully, one thing went my way those days, as I got a lucky potato drop from a zombie, so now we can have good food for the rest of the episode. I then had a terrible idea to make a staircase to the top of the world, because even though there's a bedrock roof, Structures can sometimes generate within it, which breaks the bedrock. I was planning to get to the surface by that night, but when I came across this hilly area on my staircase, somebody stopped me dead in my tracks. Another zombie villager. I know it's just a nitwit, but I just needed two villagers to make more, so this was perfect. So down the staircase we went for the rest of the night. By day 23, I'd return to the surface and put her in the hole. McDiggin and Paul shall make many, many many children. Day 24, I fished for the only ingredient missing in order to make my zombies into humans, a weakness potion. Only issue was that I can't get glass for bottles, so the only way to get water bottles is by fishing for it. Needless to say, it would be day 100 when I just got one bottle, so I had to change to plan B, bartering. Before that though, I really wanted to get to the surface of the world, and after a long, long time of mining, I found the spot. One piece of dirt was all it took. So I towered up and basked in the beautiful bedrock ceiling's glory. Also, I saw these weird creatures in the distance and I didn't know what they were. Turns out there was some random bug in my snapshot where cows looked like this. I don't know what was wrong with them, but I just killed them to put them out of their misery.
Day 25, I remembered piglins occasionally trade water bottles, so I went to the nether to try and get one. However, seeing as there were a bunch of endermen nearby, I figured that extra pearls for more eyes couldn't hurt. And pause the video. I want you all to consider a few things when I resume this clip. A. This enderman is not happy that I looked at him. B. This pigman is named Freddy. Freddy has serious anger issues. And C. I am using a diamond sword, which has the chance to perform a sweeping attack where multiple mobs are hurt with one click. And with that all in mind, resume the clip. and Enderman and Freddy's game were all staring me down on this singular weeping vine. With one and a half hearts, no food in my hotbar to heal up, and only one block, I am one hit away from death. My next steps would have to go perfectly, or my world will be gone forever. I somehow escape with one and a half hearts left and I dig as far away as my pickaxe will take me. But that was way, way too close. After mining for the majority of day 25, Freddy and his friends seemed okay with me around, so I bartered with some piglins to get some water bottles. Unfortunately for me, this plan took barely any time and I got the drop pretty quickly. In the end, I got two water bottles and I headed out safely. Kinda. And those water bottles were quickly turned into splash potions of weakness. And those chest my carts also came in clutch with some golden apples for the zombie villagers. And after splashing and giving them their apples, they became human not too long after. I let them out of their holes and I baby proofed the area just so they wouldn't wander off. And to end off the day, I farmed some more warped wood to make torches for the caverns. Day 29, I was turning that one potato drop into a potato empire. And the potatoes were then quickly thrown to McDiggin and Ball to get some babies in the oven. This feels illegal. Like, it isn't, but this feels illegal. What an arrogant child. Days 29 to 30, I expanded my farm, did some more strip mining, and overall did some maintenance work on my area. Days 31 to 33, a lot of children were being made. Those beds definitely helped. And after observing the miracle of life, I then made a long, long voyage to the stronghold. I crossed over hills, caverns, you named it, I crossed it. And for the cherry on top, every single eye that I threw either got lost or just broke. So needless to say, with spirits at an all-time low, I was pretty stoked when I fell into a river and emerged right next to the stronghold. I found the portal room pretty quickly, but I was going to need more eyes, since I had a grand total of zero. In the meantime though, I raided this place for its wood and its bookshelves, which were located in the library. Also, thankfully I remembered to make another portal down here so that I wouldn't have to travel this far again. Day 34, I found my nether portal close to my nether fortress, and I spent the rest of the day traveling back home. And with the bookshelves I got from the stronghold, I constructed my level 30 enchanting station. And using some extra bookshelves I had, I made some lecterns for my villagers. Because I cured McDiggin and Paul, I also got some good discounts from them, but I couldn't get mending for one emerald like I wanted. But I did get a silk touch trade for an emerald, which I just decided to take. Day 36, I threw an absurd amount of potatoes at children. I also killed some of my chickens, which gained me a solid amount of cooked chicken. And on this day, I also reunited with Mason, also known as my favorite villager in Minecraft. And for the rest of the day, I tried to get a mending book, but couldn't get one. Side note, I think the villagers spawned a cat in my home, so I fished for a little bit, and I successfully tamed my first pet. Days 37 to 39, I was focusing on preparing for the dragon fight. I leveled up McDiggin a few times with paper and books, but he didn't sell me mending. After that, I used all of my levels to enchant my chest plate, pickaxe, leggings, sword, and boots. I got some arrows for my bow, bred my sheep monstrosity, and got a ton more food for the fight. And then I swam to my mine shaft to barely get level 30, which let me enchant my bow to get just flame. <laughs> yeah, I was not taking that, so I enchanted a different bow with power 2, combined the two, and my bow was now good enough, I guess. Only thing missing was ender pearls, so I spent day 40 killing endermen, getting all the pearls I needed. 
I also nearly pooped my pants there. I crafted up 11 eyes in total and went back to my stronghold portal to place all of those eyes in the end portal frames. If I died in the end realm, my entire world would be deleted. But on day 41, I jumped in. And now, the dragon's free trial of life was about to expire. With the end crystals gone, it was now time to face the mighty beast with my crappy sword and crappy bow. And then... I had done it. I defeated my mighty ex-wife. I got up to 67 levels, grabbed the dragon egg, and using two extra pearls that I had, I went through the end gateway. My goal was obviously to find an Elytra, and so days 42 to 43, I looked around the end for one. And may I just say, it took a long time to find just one end city. Not to mention just how sore my pinky finger was after bridging across the ends. But after walking for what felt like thousands of blocks, I finally found one. After getting some shells, I bridged off the end city and easily made my way into the end ship. I beat up the inside shulker, which was on the ceiling for some reason, and got some enchanted armor, diamonds, emeralds, and other good loot. And to store this loot, I also made my first shulker box. And I know I'm annoying you by not taking it, so I then grabbed the elytra, and I could now fly around my world. And I was getting comments about this last time, so comment whether you pronounce it elytra or elytra. I was getting absolutely hated on for my pronunciation, so let's see who's right. Before I left, I grabbed the dragon head, crafted some fireworks with the materials I brought, and tried to leave. Keyword there is tried. I got caught in an absurd amount of bullets. The top room did have some good loot though, so it's kind of worth it. But with that, I was out, and I glided to my end gateway, and jumped in the end portal to watch the entire 30 minute end credits of the game, acknowledging all of the- I am just kidding, I skipped that crap immediately. Day 44, I enchanted my old diamond pickaxe, and combined it with the pickaxe from an end ship to make sheesh speed. That was a voice crack. I still had 53 levels from the dragon fight though, so I enchanted my axe, helmet, bow, and shovel. I also wanted to get a looting 3 book from a villager, but even after 15 minutes of doing this, I didn't have any luck getting one. Day 45, I was fishing because the villager spawned another cat in my house, and luckily, this one only wanted one cod. I enchanted another diamond pickaxe too, and seeing as I was practically throwing away my levels, let's enchant my rod while we're at it. Day 46, my cat gave me a foot charming and the rest of these two days i was mining for iron you may be wondering why i'm getting so much iron but trust me it'll all make sense soon after two days this is how much i got but i was going to need a lot more for what i want to accomplish day 48 i created an auto smelter and also discovered bean blocks the rest of the day my hunt for looting three continued but of course villagers just did not cooperate so instead i just stopped at looting one puny enchantment but i didn't care anymore i'll just combine it in an anvil Day 50, I made my first farmer to sell my crops to. I haven't been showing it, but I actually have been farming my stuff this entire time, so I wanted to sell some crops for some extra money. And yes, I do use fortune on my crops, do not attack me in the comments. And when I leveled up my farmer, he actually sold me apples, which I forgot they could do. Since I couldn't get apples from trees, these were an easy way to make golden apples to zombify my villagers in the future. I also checked my otter smelter midday, and yeah, this thing was definitely working. And then I combined my loot in one books and also forgot that one villager actually traded me mending. So, oops. But I forgot that levels were a thing, so I had to head off to the nether to get some extra XP. And by day 51, I had returned with 22 levels. But as I returned home, something caught my eye. A slime. Now I have survived 100 days in super flat, so I'm no stranger to these things. But this was the first one that I had actually encountered in the cave. I decided to chop it up a little to get the smallest ones, and I killed them all except for one. Baby slimes don't do any damage, so I decided to keep one as a little friend. 
But unfortunately, I sort of forgot baby slimes are more fragile than like a leaf and uh... Rest in peace, Jerry. You didn't deserve this, buddy. You won't be forgotten. <laughs> Anyways, I finally had enough levels to combine the two good swords into one amazing sword. The next day, I made a ton of beds to go blast mine in for netherite. And with 18 beds, I got 4 ancient debris in total. Kind of a disappointment, I won't lie. And day 53, with more levels from quartz mining, I combined my sword and book to make an amazing sword. I then used the ancient debris that I mined yesterday to make my first netherite ingot, but I decided to save it for later on. In the remainder of the day, I did some clearing out to make space for a storage room. This warped crap was also getting real annoying, so I had to take it down. It looks like an IC that blew up everywhere, and there's zero chance I'm keeping this stuff up. Days 55 to 57, I was putting my looting three sword to use in the nether to try and get three wither skeleton skulls. Obviously, if you couldn't already tell, I wanted to get a beacon, but even with looting three, this took a really long time. Not just because the drop rates were low, but because stuff like this happened. How is that my fault? And that wasn't the only time either. This happened constantly. I almost wanted to hit them at this point. Like, are you kidding me? But regardless, after 96 kills, I got my first head, got my second at 118 kills, and my final head at 120 kills. After that, I did a bit of blaze killing, but after my shield broke, I knew I had to head out. But day 58, I was getting ready to fight the wither, and that included a lot of eggs from my farm. Take a guess as to why you think I'm bringing eggs to the wither fight in the comments. I traveled super far away from home, built a room for the wither to spawn, and threw all of my eggs down to make chicks. But with that, it was time to defeat the almighty wither. Just like that, I defeated the wither without a scratch, and I was rewarded with my first nether star. But trust me, if you want to see a real crazy wither fight, wait until the second one I fought later in the video. This game hates me. Day 60, I bought an amending book from a villager and put it on my elytra and made a ascent to the bedrock ceiling. It's important to note that I downloaded the newest snapshot at this point, which made for a very interesting world. At the surface, I flew away with my rockets and I was looking for a generated pillager outpost. The generation would only make the ground of the structure, but that would still give me some birch planks and dark oak wood. But on my journey, this is what I saw? Yeah, I wasn't too sure either. But that wasn't as crazy as this. The gosh dang far lands had generated in my world. I think this had something to do with the bedrock ceiling being lowered in the new snapshot, but it was crazy to see this in my world. And what's even crazier is what I saw while flying a bit further, because there was a village with trees. I didn't think there was any way to get trees in this world, so this was a huge find. I raided pretty much everything the village had, but nothing was as valuable as those saplings. I continued flying and saw my next destination pretty soon, a fully generated pillager outpost. I walked up preparing for all-out mayhem, but there actually wasn't a pillager there, so instead I just took its valuable stuff. But with 28 saplings in my inventory, I decided to head home. And with all that wood I collected, I added storage to the storage room and finished the walls. Day 63, I made even more chests and sold some stone to Mason. I also heard really loud groaning, and after making sure it wasn't my mom and dad in the other room, I checked to find the source. Surely enough, a zombie party was happening right next door, but I had to kill them all and light up the cave. And yeah, no wonder there were a lot of zombies. This librarian also leveled up, and he sold me glass, which I took immediately, because with glass, I could finally create my beacon. Day 64 to 65, I needed to repair my mending gear, so I would travel to the end portal and kill some endermen. I ended up repairing my elite draw, sword, and pickaxe, but for some reason, I got sidetracked and went through the end gateway to start looking for an end city. I'm not too sure why I got so distracted, but I did end up finding one, and it was the smallest end city I've ever seen. Found another one not too far away though, got some okay loot from the chests, found a third one with an end ship, and of course, I snatched that extra elytra. And speaking of Elytra, mine was almost broken, so I repaired that bad boy. Somehow found a fourth end city, which I thought was tiny, but little did I know. It was absolute hell in that place. Day 66, I headed to the main end island just to repair my stuff, since it was extremely broken from end busting. After grinding to level 30, I enchanted my axe and got the jackpot axe. 
I also started assembling some items for a project, and with saplings I can get the most important item for the project. Leaves. Lots. And lots of leaves. And with all the materials, I spent days 67 to 69. Nice. Building the farm, which is of course an Enderman XP farm. This farm requires you to be at Y level 1, so you literally need to place blocks right next to the void, which is low-key terrifying. But I followed a tutorial by Shunkercraft to help guide me through the farm. Spawning the Endmite was also a pain, but I got one eventually. Name tagged him McSqueamish so that he wouldn't despawn. And I then opened up the cobblestone gate and the farm was going crazy. Like after just a few swings, I was racking up XP like nuts. I killed these skinny boys for a while because this farm just spawned so many. And my many tools and armor was fully repaired in barely any time. I'm not entirely sure what McSqueamish did to these guys, but nonetheless, I got up to level 6, 7, oh my god. I got up to level 72 and got my butt out of there. Day 70, I spent all day trying to get him breaking 3, and I swear to god, Mojang is working against me at this point. This man didn't offer it a single time. So instead, I bought a bunch of Unbreaking 1 books, combined them to get Unbreaking 3, which took all 72 levels, and put that on my Elytra. And just to finish off the XP, I made a speedy silk touch pickaxe. Day 71, I made a ton of baked potatoes and started growing saplings for some oak wood. Which was a pretty normal process until I saw this. A bee nest spawned in, which means... Bees. I didn't even know that bee nests could spawn on trees, but clearly I, I, they can. I then went off mining in search of more iron, because if you haven't already guessed, I wanted to make a max level beacon. And max level beacons need a lot of iron. This is how much iron ore I mined, and this is how much that is with fortune. And of course, it's going straight to the oven. Day 73, I made a little exhibit in the corner of my storage room for my axolotl friend. I think she likes it, but she definitely needs a name, so you know what to do. I then started organizing some of my storage room, mainly just moving the cobblestone since I had buttloads of this stuff. Day 74 to 75, I sheared my sheep to craft loads of beds, expanded my storage room, and spent loads of time organizing my crap. This is probably the most boring thing in all Minecraft, but I, I had to do it so that I didn't end up with a chest monster in my living room. After that boring work, I needed some action, so I headed off to the nether for the next two days to get some more ancient debris. I had like 20 beds, so I assumed that I could get at least four pieces, but I ended up just finding more ancient debris by just mining with my netherite pickaxe. And by the end of the trip, I had six ancient debris in total. But the journey left my pickaxe in worse shape than an Egyptian scroll, so I had to go to my Enderman farm to mend it back up. But for some reason, the Endermen were not coming to my kill chamber. And upon further investigation, I found an Enderman on top of McSqueamish's minecart. So from what I can assume, this head killed McSqueamish. The next day, this is completely unrelated, but I was in the nether fighting blazes and stuff and I heard this. Did that not sound like the Manhunt song? Tell me tell me someone else hears that. After freaking out about that for some reason, I slammed my cranium into a wall until another Endermite spawned, named this one McSqueamish 2.0, and hoped that an Enderman wouldn't murder this one this time. Back home, I mined up a lot of Nether Gold Ore from my Nether Expeditions, and by the end of it, I only needed 8 more Ore Blocks from my Max Level Beacon. Speaking of the Nether Expedition, I smelted my 6 Ancient Debris and made my second Netherite Ingot, which went straight on my chest plate. And to finish off my max level beacon, I decided not to go mining, but instead go to the ceiling to fight some abandoned portals with gold blocks. I figured that this would be a little bit more interesting than mining, and it was, not because of what I found, but because of the fact that dinosaurs attacked me. This world had a bedrock ceiling that kept these pterodactyls out, but that clearly didn't stop them now. And after killing them, I got enough ore blocks to make my max level beacon. I really wanted to test this thing out, but I couldn't activate it with bedrock above it, so I needed to go back to the surface to construct it. Thankfully, I didn't mess up constructing it. Twice. I put haste 2 on this bad boy, and within a second, I could insta-mine stone. And after mining stone for a good 15 minutes, it was time to head back down. Before trading all that stone to Mason though, I wanted to get the best prices possible, so I brought Brenda the Zombie to some Masons. I mined a lot more stone than I thought, but these discounted prices were making me absolute cheddar. Capitalism continued the next day, and I was really starting to get a lot of emeralds. But my sphere of influence can wait, because I wanted to start work on a small custom terraformed area. 
I know that doesn't sound that exciting, but I did want to do a semi big building project for these 100 days and this would kind of suffice. Also, my name is literally the terrain, so you should expect me to do something with the ground. This section also allowed me to experiment with some 1.17 blocks like Deep Slate, which I honestly think may be my new favorite block. No. Never mind. I also tried out some tough, which looked like off-brand cobblestone, and I finished off the cliff face with some cobblestone and, of course, regular stone. And the wall was looking pretty good with that gradient, but I still wanted some extra detail, so I pushed a few sections back to give the build some depth. And, of course, we added that grass top to finish off the nice wall. Day 86, I bought exactly two name tags for two chickens that had been stuck in a river for, like, 40 days. I named one Dumb and the other one Cluck, and together, they are Dumb Cluck. I'm really pushing monetization limits here. Day 87, I for some reason started using my limited dark oak wood for the wall. I had like no dark oak wood, so I don't know why I thought this was a good idea. Also, I've been editing out all the organization I've been doing, but if the days go quick, it's because half the time I'm just reorganizing the storage room. The next few days, I needed a break from building and reorganizing to focus my final go getting netherite armor. I already had two netherite scraps, meaning that if I wanted full netherite, I'd need 10 more ancient debris. And for the first time ever, gravel actually helped me, because there was some debris right above it. With that luck, I of course kept mining all of the gravel I saw, and to my honest shock, there was more ancient debris under it. And in total, I found 8 ancient debris by just mining. But this process absolutely destroyed my pickaxe, so I went to the end farm to mend it up. Day 90, I mined an absurd amount of gold ore in the nether, so I fortuned that all up before smelting that ancient debris to get two more netherite ingots. Ingot 1 was going on my pants, and ingot 2 was going on my helmet. I spent some more time on my home and ended up using quartz slab for the floor, and I made a little enclosure for the dragon egg, which was honestly just an excuse to flex my ores. After that, I made some sort of bedroom place, but I didn't have enough warp planks to finish the walls off, so I made my way to the nether to get some more. But along the way, I got distracted and started really wanting full netherite armor. I only needed two more ancient debris, so I made my way down and somehow found one of my old mines. Fortunately, it didn't take long to find the last two debris I needed, plus one extra for the future. Day 92, I was cooking the debris for my final netherite ingot, and I wasted no time putting these on my boots. The wall also looked kind of gray to me, so I decided to add some leaves to kind of spruce it up a little bit. Day 93, I saw the world without the slight Fulbright I've had all episode. This is the highest brightness setting in the game, by the way. You honestly could not tell it from Moody. But I had to see the darker version because I wanted to completely mob-proof my caverns, which was much easier with lower brightness. Day 94, I was mining up these amethyst blocks because I wanted to expand on the wall design. I definitely liked it, but I thought it was missing something, such as, oh, I don't know, an amethyst cave. Bright and early on day 95, I changed the storage room floor to polished granite and bought some glass for my villagers to finally make some windows. And the next day, I had a crazy idea. What if I defeat the wither? Again. So off to the nether I went to get three more skulls. Fortunately, with netherite armor, I was practically invincible, and I could easily farm wither skeletons. And my final skull drop was the luckiest moment of this entire world. I got two wither skeleton skulls in a row. That's a 1 in 1600 chance of happening, so it's pretty cool that I got it. So day 97, I of course grabbed all the eggs I could, ran far away from my home, threw those bad boys like there was no tomorrow, and it was time to do this thing again. I had done it. I beat the Wither for the second time. But there was one thing. The fight wasn't over. Yeah, the Wither effect did me dirty here. I got down to three hearts without any healing other than food. Not a good situation to be in, especially with three days left before the final day. 
Regardless, when I got home, I of course crafted the second beacon and deposited the 32 wither roses I got from the fight. Day 98, I accidentally released half of the sheep population into the caves. I got them back in though, and I definitely didn't harm any of the sheep while doing it. Nope. No harm at all. Day 99, I wanted to expand my disc collection as much as possible before the last day. But this process was an absolute clown fest on wheels. Especially since I kept walking into ravines. But these skeletons were not helping. Nor were the creepers, or the spiders, or the zombies. You get the point. After 10 minutes of this literal dumpster fire, I managed to get my first disc blocks and got the second one of Maul. But I started low-key raging trying to get a third one because these mobs just would not cooperate. I did end up getting my final one as weight though, which I played to help calm me down. And before I knew it, it was day 100. And I won't lie to you, I really didn't know what to do on this day. I had done so much in this world despite the weird circumstances I was in. Like I mean I made villagers, I beat the ender dragon, beat two withers, made an XP farm, and so much more. And seeing as I may not play in this world ever again, this was sort of my final day to say goodbye to what I had made. I grinded to level 69 from my final trip, I said goodbye to both my cats, my pink axolotl, and I stripped butt naked to end off these 100 days in hardcore in a caves only world. If you enjoyed the video, all I ask is that you subscribe and like, and don't forget to stay handsome. Peace out.